Hi, my name's Jason Gordon. I'm the brand ambassador for Name Audio. Recently, we launched our new 200 series product, and I would like to talk about how we can integrate these products into legacy systems. Our customers are the most important part of our business, and we'd like you to enjoy the new upgrades that these products facilitate. Okay, so we've taken um, some calls and some contacts from existing customers, and we've got a few scenarios for you. So first of all, existing customer Terry, um, she's got a name Nova um, and a pair of stand mount speakers. Um, what's her kind of next step? What can she do to improve her system? So Nova itself is a very capable product. Looking at the new Classic series, I think it would be uh, relevant for her to improve the system by adding the new NAT250. Okay, and that's so which, which one's that? This, 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 this product here. Okay, yeah. and then what would she need to, to do that? Okay, one simple cable, this product here. So okay. there's, there's no uh, resoldering or desoldering of the products okay. themselves. We've actually done all the hard work and it's simply this four pin din which comes from the back of the Nova yep. to two XLRs providing a left and right signal into the power amp and away she goes. Brilliant. Simple. Great, excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jim from Glasgow's got a, a slightly older kind of olive system um, combined with an original, N so he's got original NDX, um, an 82, uh, a high cap um, and an olive style 250. Okay. Um, he'd like to reduce his box count. Okay. What can he do? Um, the obvious one uh, is certainly the NSC222. Okay. He can remove the NAC282 and high cap. Yeah. So um, the streamer also disappears because the preamp and streamer will now be contained in one connection. So you're effectively losing three boxes. Three then. boxes. Okay, yeah. uh, and the way you would connect it actually is, a, again, another very straightforward cable, similar to the previous cable, except we go left and right XLR output from the uh, NSC222 to one single very, very classic legacy uh, XLR Excellent. input, and away he goes. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Okay. Um, Angie from Edinburgh's got a legacy NAC 272, so the old style streaming preamp, um, and an older style um, 250. Um, she's wanting to improve the sound, but I think also a bit of functionality um, sure. as well uh, on the streamer. So would that be a... Would that be a triple two then? Yeah, absolutely. Triple two again. Okay. Um, what, what benefits would that, would that give her? Uh, well, the triple two um, is certainly going to give her the facilities of things like Cobots. Okay. Um, but more importantly, a much better preamplifier stage. Okay. The 272 was a very basic product. Um, it, it was really mainly a, a DAC and a streamer with a volume control okay. or volume attenuation. This is actually a, a high quality analog preamp. Uh, the volume control in this product is almost a carbon copy of what we use in statement, our very, very best preamplifier. Um, this would be a significant upgrade into her system. From memory, um, she's got a turntable as well, so yeah. I think okay. she's using an off-board phono stage for that. Okay. So with the triple two... Well, triple it, two, a... it, providing you're using a moving magnet cartridge, and these range from, as you know, £80 to thousands of pounds. Sure plugged directly into the back, it's got a very high quality phono stage. Um, we think the phono stage, if any of our listeners, viewers know, the previous range is slightly better than the Super 8 3, so it's a very high it's quality. Accomplished. Yeah, yeah, very, very good. Cool. Okay. Um, David from Falkirk's got a ND5XS and a really original Nate 1. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I guess Triple two, 250 would triple two, be two fifty. Triple two, two fifty. I mean, that's going to be a significant upgrade. Yeah. Um, no worries, of course, with cables because it's going to be a self-contained unit. Yeah. The cables are provided with the power amplifier, so uh, there's no additional cables to be introduced into that product okay. range. And you'll also have the benefit of an integrated volume control as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah. The triple two, the volume control works from the app as well, doesn't it? Indeed so it does. It will yeah. be a lot easier for just operationally as well. So, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Michael uh, up in Inverness. Um, he's got a NDX2 with a 282, a super cap and a 250. Yeah. So very much a kind of classic sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. mid to high end name system yeah. from back in the day. Um, is that a power supply? Is that a, what would you do? You know do? what, it could be a power supply, it could be a 250. We could really push the boat out and do both. Okay. Um, if he's to use the 250, it's the cable we mentioned earlier, four pin to XLR that will yeah. connect. 
And one of the probably more exciting products for me, because I always like to talk about source first, mm -hmm. um, if you were to do just one piece, I would change or add a power supply to that system. And in this case, you see the gentleman doesn't have a power supply. There's no power supply yet. Well, um, yeah, he's got a super cap, but there's nothing on the streamer. Nothing on the streamer. Nothing on the streamer. So I would use this cable. So a simple, what we call Burndy connection in, that's the name of the plug. And the power supply uses two contacts or two connections. This cable will allow him to use the MPX300 into the NDX2 and uh, or, or even an NDX, and it's a significant improvement in sound quality. Very, very big. Probably bigger than the 250 is going to offer initially. Okay. Once this is in, 250 on top of that, wonderful. And I guess yeah. that's just back to the source first, being Absolutely. always the power. Absolutely, being, being the one to, to yeah, really get right. In the world, right. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Barry in Down and Fries, he's got a 202, a high cap, and a 200. Um, oh. And I think he's got his eye on a... On one of the new 250s. 250 that comes so, back to our classic cable again. Yeah. As you can see, the cable range actually is quite basic in what you need to do. Uh, again, four pin to two XLR, and he incorporates the new 250. Okay. Okay. And what kind of benefits do you reckon he would get going a new 250 over a 200? I think you'll find there'll be a, a huge amount of authority behind the sound. All of a sudden, it will be literally pushing and pulling the drive unit in the right direction, and things will just sound more effortless. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, lovely upgrade. We've yeah. also done the day, I and mean, I think the noise floor thing's quite significant as well. That's just that it's just that much quieter, yeah. much cleaner. I think and actually that, that's a good point. It, that, that I think that illustrates our commitment to reducing noise floors yeah. to increase the dynamic range and musicality of our hi-fi system. Um, finally, uh, we've got Torco from Perth who um, isn't using a complete name system, but he's using an NDX2. Okay. Um, and he quite fancies looking at improving his kind of source quality. So yeah. what would you do with that? If he's using an NDX2, um, I take it he has a preamp and a power amp Yeah, he's well. got another, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I guess he's looking at, I guess the power supply is the logical. I think the power supply is, a, is a definitely a logical upgrade for Okay, him. so does the, that's the MPX300, does that ship with a, with a cable in the box, or is that an additional cable? How does that, how does that work? It comes ships with the cables in the box. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The additional cable, for example, we've been talking about MPX300 on legacy products. You have to buy this one as an additional. Okay. Yeah. Um, but at name, we've always supplied the relevant cables for the product range itself. So, okay, that's great. Okay. okay. Thanks very much, Jim. Thank you.